This will be a short video, I promise. It will be painless. And I'm just showing you the stages that um, I'm, I'm going through in the preparation, in the construction of my tiller uh, for the giant longbow. And so this, actually, you can see the traces that are, are aged. This was an old fence post, just a split um, rail cedar fence post. And I figured, yeah, instead of just letting it sit around, I'm going to turn it into something. And it, it, it makes a... I think a really pretty kind of contrast between um, <clears throat> the aged stuff and the fresh stuff. And there's also, I like this, between the heartwood and the sapwood. So it's, this is going to be a really pretty piece of wood, especially when it's, I don't know, varnished or sparurethaned or something. When it's finished, it's going to really bring out some colors, which is nice. And so, the steps, this notch right here, now that I have the loan of a bandsaw, hello Keith, is that I made my notch here with the bandsaw. I set up a stop block behind the blade a little bit so I could maintain this flat edge and just simply, you know, marked it with a pencil and yeah, and then kind of chopped it out and the bandsaw is nice like a table saw, which I don't suggest people using a table saw like a bandsaw like I do. Do as I say, not as I do, because actually this is the most dangerous tool in the shop. Um, you can just kind of run it along there and smooth it out. So simple. I went ahead. I know I said I wasn't going to laminate a hardwood table on here, but I was looking at that really pretty piece of hardwood and thinking that's going to make a nice contrast. A lot of the stuff I do, um, it's not only function, but I like to bring a little bit of artistic flair into it. And I, I do love aesthetics. And ripped it on the table saw. And then rip the groove in here. You can see that the, the bolt groove is rectangular. All this is is a guide, so I'm going to take some 80 grit sandpaper, uh, wrap it tightly around an arrow shaft, and that's how I'm going to make the string groove round and, and nice. If I use a smaller arrow shaft than the finished one, the tolerances should be just perfect. Use a smaller shaft with the sandpaper on it. There's a little slot factor. It'll work out nicely. <clears throat> What else? Okay, gotta have cow horn. I like that. You can't see it because it's not polished, it's not gleaming as it will when it's finished, but I thought that's nice, a little detail right here. Now as far as the the slot, what would you call it, the ledge or what have you for the skein style mechanism, I just went ahead, measured it out. I actually kind of chickened out. It's only 31 inches from here to this. You know, why stress out the bow more? Maybe it could be pulled farther, but, you know, diminishing returns, perhaps, possibility of breaking. So I just went with 31 inches. I guessed the weight of the bow, the length of it, it should draw 31 inches. If there's an issue with it, all I need to do is just string it a little more loose. This, I should add can be used with different bows. I can make that heavy, heavy Osage and, and sinew backed bow with a long draw and use the same tiller. So I'm not out anything. I'll just put my long bow back in the long bow section of my, my stash corners and, and march along with a different prod. Why not? Okay, so I just sawed this notch out and then kind of zoom, scoop that out. And you can see that this divot goes deeper. And that's just a matter of fitting. I've got this nice, thick, flat piece of horn that's going to go in here. I kind of like the idea that it has a backstop so it's not going to try to rotate, just make it more secure. Before I put this in, though, I drilled this hole because I want this to happen. I want to have that hole drilled, glue this in, which bisects, nice term. I don't, I'm not going to commit to the fact that that's correct bisects my hole. Once that's done, I can just, after sanding this, you know, to get it so it's nice and flush, I am going to then drill through this hole, and that's going to be a guide with a sharp drill bit, which will drill through that horn so the peg actually is embedded into the horn. I believe that that'll make the string, um, give it a, a more sure purchase as it pushes it up. Now, it's a thought question. I could easily do this groove before gluing this in, glue that in, 
shape it somehow to the whatever thickness I want um, between the beginning of the arrow knock and where the string comes up. And so I've got a consistent and easy way to place it. If this doesn't have the string groove in it, then I can just put the bolt arrow quarrel. I'm going to call it an arrow because it's long, just against this thing. I am going to go ahead and make another bolt clip like I did on my previous lock bow made out of cow horn. I love the cow horn. Very elastic, fun to work, really pretty when it's finished. And that'll make a nice contrast with this. Those are the steps. Um, rounded this. I sincerely do not believe that I have to have like a hardwood plug in here to keep it from damaging the cedar. The, the cordage that wraps this is not going to be as tight as the string on the bow. It's going to be bigger diameter. It's going to have multiple wraps, so it's going to support it over a bigger area. So I do not believe that it's going to be an issue with the cedar. If you're working with cedar and you do want to, say, reinforce it, you could certainly just take a glue or an epoxy, you know, with carpenter's cement or what have you, and just rub it in there just to let it soak in and strengthen it. Now, a trick that I'm not going to use on this one, but you may use it in other projects. Sometimes I've used it to... If I'm putting a screw or something in or a bolt or what have you, hardware, into a surface that I want to disguise, you know, you make a bigger hole, you kind of countersink it in there. I've taken, this is quite clever, is take Gorilla Glue and just put it in there. And Gorilla Glue is foaming, you know, it, it foams and it, it seeks little crevasses. But if you were to put um, aluminum foil or something that's not going to stick to it over that plug or that divot that you want to fill with Gorilla Glue. Put something that's not going to stick to, then a little thin piece of wood or something like that, and then wrap it with tape or rubber bands to pressurize it. That Gorilla Glue will not be able to foam out. It'll be under pressure and it'll it'll actually, you could even stuff some sawdust in there to mix with it. It'll 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 combine with the sawdust and the pressure and all that stuff, like a metamorphic Gorilla Glue, a lacolithic type of thing. And uh, because it's under pressure, it'll be very hard, it'll be very tough, and that's a good way to fill holes using Gorilla Glue. Just thought I'd throw that handy tidbit out there. Not going to mention other topics except to say I discovered I've been mining YouTube, you know, in my, my slack hours. And aside from airliners turning into demons... I think it's fascinating um, listening how airliners run off a compressed gas or compressed air, which is, which is, how can I describe this? Airliners, jet engines are run off, actually run off of compressed air because everything's a lie. And there's compressors that make that compressed air on there. But nobody answers what is powering those compressors. Maybe compressed air. Another thing that I've mined is perpetual motion machines, free energy devices. I think that's fascinating. You know, it's a mental puzzle. I do not believe it whatsoever. You can't get more energy out than, you know, you put into a system. Um, what else? I think that is about it for John is mining YouTube for interesting and fascinating views into the human psyche. Um, yep, that's it. Have a good day. And I'm really looking forward to when this is finished. But Enjoy every step. Enjoy every step along the way. And in that way, you'll be able to proceed into ventures um, that are more complex than just, you know, immediate gratification type of things. Enjoy every step in your project, and you shall succeed in anything you do. Except perpetual motion machines. Had to throw that in there. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and thank you for watching.